Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. My guest says President Trump has triggered World War III. But it's different than what you think. Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Is God ready to bring a tsunami wave of healing onto planet Earth today? Sid Roth has spent over 40 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm here with my friend Dr. Michael Brown. We've been friends over 30 years. And uh, Mike, uh, you've written over 35 books. Uh, and uh, but this is what you said to me on the phone. It's this book is the most intense book you have ever written with the greatest urgency of any book you have ever written. And then I got a report and this just didn't even sound like you. While you were writing this book, the fire of God really literally came on you. Explain what you meant. Yeah, the intensity was in two ways. The content, as God began to open my eyes to what was happening in the spiritual realm, as I began to connect the dots in the society and the unseen forces behind it, and then putting the material out, it was intense, really life and death issues. But then the way God moved on me, the publisher said, can we get the manuscript by a certain point in time? I said, well, I'm going to do my best. I got moved on. I got stirred. It was literally like I felt fire in my hand. I had to keep writing. I had to keep writing. And I remember one night, it was 2.30 in the morning. I thought, okay, you're done. Time to stop. And the moment I laid down, I said, no, I got hit with another subject. And I went back downstairs and I went to writing again till 4.30 in the morning. I was consumed. And it's almost as if, aha, we've exposed Jezebel. We see what she's doing. We see what these spiritual forces are doing. And now we know how to deal with her. Who is this Jezebel? So we see Jezebel in the Old Testament and the New Testament. You could say she, she's the most wicked woman in the Bible. She came from a pagan background, married a king of Israel. She was an idol worshiper. She was a seductress. She literally killed the prophets. She silenced and intimidated by fear. She emasculated men. And, and there was a spirit of witchcraft with her as well. And it helped plunge Israel into destruction. And then Jesus in the New Testament references this false prophetess called Jezebel, probably the name he's giving her. Notice the same demonic forces, the same demonic powers that operated through Jezebel in the Bible, because she even intimidated Elijah the prophet on one occasion. This a spirit upon her, something more than her. Jesus identifies it in the New Testament also as a false prophetess, also as someone who teaches sexual immorality and idolatry. So that's the woman in the so Bible. So the spirit on that woman. Yeah is turned loose today. Uh, what's kind of the parallels with uh, today uh, and Jezebel? So, so let's look at who she was. You could say that she was an arch radical feminist. We see this like never before. Uh, I mean, radical feminists that want to abolish men from the planet. There's not a lot of foresight in thinking like that, but that's what they want to do. And, and then with idolatry, so she was an idolatry. We see the nation plunged into the worship of other gods and consumed with material earthly things. But we know in the ancient world that with idolatry, there was baby killing. We're not just talking about a woman with a difficult situation who wrestles and decides to have an abortion. We're talking about shout your abortion. We're talking about governors defending infanticide. So you've got the spirit of idolatry. You've got the spirit of baby killing. You've got the spirit of radical feminism. She was a seductress. We've got kids as young as eight years old today getting exposed to pornography. You have that aspect. Then you have witchcraft associated with her. And I've read articles and documented in the book that there are more witches 
is today in America than Presbyterians. Then you've got the spirit of fear, the intimidation. And what does she do? She silences the prophetic voice. So we don't have it. You can't speak. Everyone's afraid. If I speak, I'm going to lose my job. If pastors are afraid to speak, individuals. So, But, but I, this has really struck home to you because this spirit of Jezebel came on my friend Mike. He didn't even know it was a sneak attack. Uh, and almost took your life. Briefly tell me what happened. Yeah, so there were three different times in my life that I realized I'm dealing with Jezebel. The first time was right after God gave me a prophetic message to America to the, for the church to wake up, a wake-up call for the nation with a promise of revival. Next thing, all hell broke loose against me and against Nancy. She got it started, she got hit, my wife Nancy, with everything she never got hit with before. Where's this coming from? I got hit. The enemy's telling me, you're coming down. I felt no authority. I felt no ability to minister. And I now, wait, wait, wait. If you knew this guy the way I know this guy, when he says he didn't even want to go out and minister, you know that's something strong. When I would feel a prophetic word to bring, I was afraid. I had to pray for hours just to even get my head above water. That's so hard to believe. And bombarded by lies, I felt paralyzed. I felt emasculated. Well, a few years after this, Nancy and I are in India. And, and we were going to one city. The, the brother we work with, a real apostolic man, planted thousands of churches. He said, we're going to the city of Vijayawada. They worship a goddess there, and she is the principality of the entire state of Andhra with 60 million people. They worship her, and, and we're going to go confront her. And God spoke to me, do what Elijah did on Mount Carmel, and call all the priests and the worshipers of Kanaka Durga, and say, we're going to find out tomorrow night who's the real God, Yahweh or Kanaka Durga. Before we got there, Sid, all of a sudden, I got hit, and I realized, it's Jezebel, it's Jezebel. I felt that same thing, no authority, a spirit of fear coming over me. I, I didn't want to be prophetic and confront. So I said to Yesu Padam, I said to him, what does her statue look like? And he said, brother, this beautiful, powerful goddess, and she's holding in her hand the head of a giant that she killed. It's the king of demons, and she crushes him. So, so she crushes the powerful man. And then he said, it's a strange thing. Her worshipers, once a year, the men dress up as women and wear makeup. And, and, and right before we went to have this conversation. You saw the same spirit that was on Jezebel in the Bible in that country. Alive and well and thriving. Right before we got there, I had to get up in the middle of the night to try to pack because we had to drive all day. It was this old room with an old bed and, and the wood was rough. I walked by it in the middle of the night and it literally sliced off a chunk of flesh on my heel. And I heard Genesis 3.15, he'll strike your heel, but you'll crush his head. And, and we went there. We had a public confrontation. And not only did the power of God come down, a demonized man began to dance around and confess Kanaka Durga is not a god. Kanaka Durga is not a god. And not long after that, they literally had an earthquake and it shook some of the foundations of the temple. There is one true God and Jezebel is defeated in Jesus' name. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something. He went through that so you don't have to go through that. You are going to find out the connection between President Trump and Jezebel and how it will trigger World War III. Next. We will be right back to It's Supernatural! The supernatural knows no bounds, and now there are no limits to equipping you to receive your supernatural breakthrough anytime, any place. ISN, the It's Supernatural online network, offers live streaming of programs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right on your mobile devices or smart TVs. I love that I can watch my favorite shows anytime I want. My workouts are out of the box, and so are my ISN podcasts. Download the free ISN app today. Many viewers report testimonies of miracles, signs and wonders, and healings as a result of watching It's Supernatural! I was afraid of the supernatural until I started watching your TV program and since doing your mentoring study guide and DVD. Now the fear has gone and I do believe I have received an impartation from God. If you've been touched through watching It's Supernatural, share your testimony at SidRoth.org forward slash praise. Do you ever feel unloved? 
like you wish you hadn't been born, like the world would just be better off if you weren't in it. This is the truth. There is someone who loves you deeply. Before the creation of time, he knew everything about you and stored up abundant blessings for you. Every tear you have shed, he has counted. Every moment of happiness, he has rejoiced at. He watches over you from morning till night. He is your biggest fan. He formed you in your mother's womb. He adopted you into his family before creation. He has cared for you from the moment you were born. He declares that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. His thoughts toward you outnumber the sand on the seashore. He says that if your parents reject you, he will take you in. Even if your mother forgets you, he will never forget you. He will be a real father to you. He says that he has chosen you to be like his son so that you could be part of his family. He promises that you can know and depend on the love he has for you. His love is perfect. He will never abandon you. And he promises that if you draw close to him, he will draw close to you. We would love to tell you more about him. Get a free online download of the book, They Thought for Themselves, by logging onto the website, theythoughtforthemselves.com. We now return to It's Supernatural. You know what? When I read Dr. Brown's information, I mean, there is no doubt that there is a connection between President Trump and Jezebel and what we see even on the news. Why don't you explain to them what I already know? Yeah, so when, when I was here interviewing Jonathan Kahn on his book, The Paradigm, he mentioned President Trump is kind of a Jehu figure. I never thought of that, but the moment he said I thought, wait a second, Jehu in the Bible, what does it say? He drives recklessly. Some translations, drives like a madman or a maniac, and he, but he did a lot of good. He was, he was zealous for the cause of God, but there was a lot of collateral damage. So you may love the president, but either way, you see this parallel, a Jehu kind of character, an alpha male kind of character. And when he comes on the scene, Jezebel rises up again, and he's the one who ultimately takes Jezebel down. And I document the parallels between Jehu and, and Trump in the book. And, and here's what got my attention. When you have someone like Trump, again, whether you like him or not, everyone sees the kind of guy he is, it brings Jezebel up. So the moment President Trump is in, you have this women's march. It's not just lovely women that just, no, 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 blow up the White House. And then you also have with it the extreme baby killing spirit. Again, we're not talking about someone that struggled and wrestled and should have an abortion. We're talking about shout your abortion. We're talking about pounding on the Supreme Court. In your face. Yeah, during the Kavanaugh hearings. What's happened is Trump's pro-life stance, one an unlikely champion of the pro-life movement, and appointing these justices and laws being passed, it's bringing out, they're saying, this is war, we're gonna fight, we're gonna take it to the streets. So it's almost as if Jezebel came out from hiding, and there she is for everyone to see. Now here's the remarkable thing, because we're not talking about a person, we're talking about demonic spirits, we're talking about demons, we're talking about principalities, right? So Jehu, sees Jezebel, she tries to seduce him. Once again, there she is, that seductress. And he says, who's on my side? And it says there are two or three eunuchs, so these are castrated males, two or three eunuchs, and they throw Jezebel down. Said that's what has to happen. The castrated males, the men who've had their authority stripped from them. All the sitcoms that just make men into, just, you know, their hell, it's not father knows best, father is the idiot. So Jezebel, if I'm hearing you right, it's Jezebel or the spirit of Jezebel coming against a dominant male that stands up for biblical causes. Exactly. And what got my attention focused on this is when our friend Pastor John Kilpatrick on a Sunday service, when the service ended, he said, pray for the president because witchcraft is trying to take him down. Jezebel is about to attack. And, and then that prayer went viral. The Jerusalem Post even reported on it favorably, actually. The prayer went viral. And when he invited me to preach at his church, just for another reason, the Spirit said to me, look at Jezebel, look at this, look. Even the war 
war on gender that we see, that, that Bruce Jenner is woman of the year. So we're, we're fighting all these different things. We're trying to put out a fire here and a fire there. It's the same demonic power. It's the same coalition of demonic forces that work through Jezebel, that intimidate with fear, that silence the prophetic voice. The, the real tragedy is that Jezebel intimidated the prophets by killing them, and we're not even getting killed, and we're intimidated because we don't want to be unfriended on Facebook, and we don't want our rich board member to leave the church, and we're cowards. We need to speak. So when we exposed Jezebel and, and Sid, part of the intensity of writing it was the quotes, the shocking things. I, I go back to what the, the pagans used to do, the baby killing, the child killing, and what we understand, sacrificing babies to Moloch and what it looked like with the giant statue and, and the steel, and, and they'd heat up the steel and put the babies on it. And then you compare that to late-term abortion. You compare that to infanticide. We have this horrific evil taking place, and we're afraid to speak because we don't want to offend someone. If that's not the intimidation of Jezebel, I don't know what is. I'll tell you something. If you can comprehend from digesting the material that God processed through Dr. Michael Brown, you will have answers to questions that you've pondered, many you've even blamed God for, and, and it's not Him. The spirit of Jezebel does not just affect us on a national level, but also on a personal level. When we return, you're going to find out how it invades our homes, our schools, and yes, even our churches. Next on It's Supernatural. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. Prayer is an essential part to access every one of God's promises and blessings for your life. And praying daily in your God-given prayer language is so important in light of the times we are living. Introducing the brand new Sid Roth God Talk app. With this new prayer app, you will be able to set a reminder for when you want to pray. Let others know the time you spent in prayer each day for accountability. Take advantage of our worldwide prayer app community to lift your prayer requests to God. It includes a video teaching on how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and how to effectively pray the supernatural language that God has given you on a daily basis. Watch our TV archives and ISN, our It's Supernatural Network, to build your faith to believe God for the impossible. The app is free and available for iPhone, iPad, or Android devices. Just go to your device's app store and search for Sid Roth's God Talk. The supernatural of God knows no bounds. And now there are no limits to equipping you to receive your supernatural breakthrough anytime, any place. ISN, the It's Supernatural online network is now available for your mobile devices and smart TVs with this free ISN app. People are astounded at the miracles they've seen others receive on our TV programs. Now, viewers are experiencing that same touch of God, and you can too. ISN offers live streaming of programs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right on your mobile devices or smart TVs. Access our life-changing specials led by top world-class teachers or choose from dozens of powerful episodes of It's Supernatural. Just go to your app store and download it for free. Television schedules were fine for my parents' generation, but with the ISN app, I can watch what I want on my schedule. Get ready to receive your supernatural breakthrough, your healing, your miracle. Download the free ISN app today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Uh, my God, please ask me. So spell out the connection between World War III and President Trump. Is he triggering it? Yeah, so he's triggering something. We're not talking about Russia. We're not talking about <laughs> China. We're talking about something far more dangerous, far more diabolical, far more deadly. We're, we're talking about Jezebel rising up with fury, the same fury that intimidated Elijah, the same fury that helped to destroy the nation of Israel and seduce a, a king and a people. And, and, and here's the ultimate thing. Wars are fought, people are affected on some level, but demons and, and demonic powers, they affect us right where we live. 
This is a war that we're fighting in our churches. This is a war that we're fighting in our families. This is a war that we're fighting in our so, personal yeah, lives. So World War III is not a, a country like a Russia or China invading the U.S. It's the spiritual world yeah. invading our families to kill and rob and destroy. Exactly. And that's the war. When we talk about it, that's what we're focusing on. And for me, this was not just national. Oh, yeah, the book talks about national issues. But I specifically in the book talk about how to defeat Jezebel in your personal life, because I, I battled. I, when I got hit with these attacks and these three different occasions that I mentioned, it was the worst season of my life. It was like walking through knee-deep water just to, to make any progress. And for me, I wake up every morning excited. I wake up looking for battles to fight. You know what it reminds me? Uh, in baseball, they take about three bats and they swing it before they go up to do it. Then when they swing it with just the one bat, it's so much easier than the three. Uh, when you were trying to swing with the three bats, it's much easier with just one. Yeah, and with a giant hanging on my back at the yeah. same time. So instead of my normal mentality of faith and victory, it's like, battered down. I mean, I, used, I love to travel. To this day, I love to travel and preach. I didn't want to get on a plane. I remember I, I went to one church, and the pastor said, Mike, we've got some people that really need prophetic ministry. I thought, oh, no, I can't do I'm thinking, what happened to me? What happened to the authority? And, and here's what Jezebel does. She uses fear. And, and here's an essence of fear that I realized in writing the book. It's always that something is going to go wrong tomorrow. It, it, it's not that I'm in pain now. That's pain. But fear is it's going to get so bad you can't take it. Fear is you're sitting there playing with your kids and suddenly it hits you. They're going to get into an accident. Your husband's going to commit adultery. This is now, uh, now you're getting right into the home. Yeah. So it, it's it's when you get hit with these fears, you get paralyzed. You're going to fall. The, the promises aren't true. And that's the power of Jezebel, not just the seducing, not just the, the radical voices here, but the spirit of fear is part of the essence of it. And see, we are all meant to be a people of faith, a prophetic people. And fear is the thing that stifles it. Fear is the thing that for one moment of time shut down the great Elijah the prophet after the greatest mountaintop experience in killing 450 false prophets and calling down fire from heaven and exposing the evil of Jezebel, she says, your head's going to roll, and he runs. So, so when your son comes home, your young son, and says, Mom, I want to tell you, I'm really a woman, it's not because he was taught something. It's the spirit of Jezebel. Yeah, here, here, here's the deal. And the spirit of Jezebel is not only the war on gender, so gender confusion and making men into women and women into men, all right? Not just that, but the fear is now the worst case scenario becomes reality. It's the exact opposite of faith. I can't fight it. I can't it's do anything. It's having faith in your fear. Yeah, and you have no sense of authority. That's part of the emasculating. And when I say that it can happen to men, it can happen to women. Sid, I know there are people watching this, and I prepared a special CD series and, and prayed and felt this strongly, that there are people that used to walk in faith. They used to walk in authority. They used to step out. They used to be intercessors, and they've lost it. Maybe a man, he's crippled by pornography. He's lost his sense of authority. Here's a, a woman. She had some battles that she lost in prayer, and now she's paralyzed. People, Sid, there, there are millions. They are shells of who they used to be because they've been destroyed by Jezebel. It's time How do we overcome that? We, we, we first and foremost recognize the work, recognize the spirit and, and work. And I think that's the biggest problem, that you don't realize it's the spirit that's talking to you. You just think it's the circumstances. And, and I'm just so weak and I'm just so happy. Yeah. No, you're being attacked. Yeah, we're responsible. We're being attacked. That's the first thing. Then the second thing, you start to build yourself up in faith. You take the word. You put it in front of you. You take hold of it. Fear not. You embrace Embrace it. Fear not. Only believe. And then you put on the armor of God. And I open up in the book, I, I show from Ephesians 6 comparing to Isaiah 59, when it talks about the helmet of salvation, that doesn't mean put a helmet on to, to know you're saved, because Isaiah 59 says that's the helmet God wears. And the breastplate is the breastplate he wears. In other words, you literally, just like the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God, we literally put on God's armor. And once we start to renew our heart and mind and fight like that, Jezebel's going to flee. When you add into that worship and getting flooded with the joy of the Lord, what does the joy of the Lord tell you? Everything's going to be all right. God's with you. You're going to triumph. There's going to be victory. <laughs> 
And I'm going to tell you one last thought. The greatest move of God's in God's history is about to come upon us. Why do you think the devil is trying to knock you out? Think about it. When Hitler comes to power, a young Jewish girl is sent to a concentration camp. She's tortured, forced into slave labor, and fed little more than sawdust. Over 100 of her relatives are brutally murdered. When she is finally freed, the bitterness causes her to be so sick that she needs 27 surgeries. But then she discovers a revelation that totally changes her life. Have you ever wondered if there was more to life? For the ending to this true story, go to www.theythoughtforthemselves.com. Next week on It's Supernatural, this is the exact spot where Jesus himself was baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire, and this is the exact spot that you are going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire. Your gifts to this ministry will help Sid air It's Supernatural in Israel 28 times a week and distribute his evangelistic book to the Jewish people worldwide. 